Salutations and welcome to the eighth part of my Legion Artifact Weapon Appearance Guide. In this part I'll be taking a look at Demon Hunters, the class introduced with the Legion expansion. Demon Hunters were very naturally introduced in Legion and their background is heavily intertwined with the lore surrounding Illidan and the Burning Legion. I'm really quite excited for this part because this class is actually what inspired me to make these guides to begin with. I had always mained a hunter all the way back since classic, but through Legion I changed first to Death Knight and then Demon Hunter, even though I hit the class to begin with. I wasn't an expert on melee and I just kept dying. Today I prefer melee classes, which is kind of funny. On my Demon Hunter I really wanted to unlock as many artifact appearances as I could, but reading the guides on Wowhead were just overwhelming to me and hard to keep track of. For this reason, when I decided now was the time to start making videos, making a simple and easy overview of how to unlock Legion Artifact appearances was an obvious first task. And I'm incredibly happy to see how it's helping some of you. With story time over, I will begin the guide with the DPS spec of the class for once. Havoc Demon Hunters are given the Twin Blades of the Deceiver in their base green tint once they begin their class war campaign and pursue the weapons through a short questline. These blades were formerly owned by Veridus Felsoul, one of Illidan's most talented demon hunters. Unfortunately, after being killed at the Black Temple, he was revived by Kil'jaeden and forsaking his mortality turned on his former comrades. After unlocking the base tint, you unlock the blue tint of the twin blades of the Deceiver once you recover one of the pillars of creation. Each pillar is a reward for completing the entire questline in one of the Broken Isle zones. The Ages of Agrimar from Stormheim, the Hammer of Kasgoth from High Mountain, the Tears of Elune from Val Shirar, the Tight Stone of Golganath from Azuna, or the Eye of Amonsul from Surmar. The Purple Tint is a reward for recovering Light's Hut and bringing it to your class hall. You do so through the questline A Falling Star, which you pick up from Kekar and Dalaran and the red tint is unlocked after you complete the first major campaign in your class hall with the achievement Fighting with Style Classic. Hand of the Illidari is unlocked with the completion of the entire Demon Hunter class hall campaign. First, you unlock the base green and blue tints with the achievement Forged for Battle. The blue tint was previously a reward for unlocking all artifact traits in your class hall, but since BFA, this isn't really relevant and thus unnecessary. The purple tint of Hand of the Illidari will automatically be unlocked when you reach level 50 on your Demon Hunter character. In the past, this was also a little more complicated as you had to research the full history of the Twin Blades of the Deceiver to unlock the tint. But again, the Legion expansion is passed and this requirement no longer necessary. You finally unlock the red tint of Hand of the Illidari through the archaeology achievement This Side Up. The achievement requires you to complete 8 out of 10 rare archaeology projects around the Broken Isles. Each of the projects are on a 2 week rotation and vary in objectives depending on the quest. The quests you pick up from the archaeology trainer and Dalaran. Make sure you don't miss a week or you might end up having to wait a long time to pick up where you left off. Darken Blade is my favorite Twin Blades of the Deceiver appearance. You unlock it with the Balance of Power questline, which I will get right to after I finish this guide series. The Balance of Power questline is quite long and tedious, sending you on several objectives including running Mythic Legion dungeons and gathering Blood of Sargeras. I recommend running some of the quests with a max leveled, well geared character or with a solid group. I've put a link to the questline in the description below. With the completion of the quest line and the improving on history achievement, you unlock the gorgeous red tint of Darken Blade. After unlocking Darken Blade, you can obtain the green tint of the appearance by killing 8 world bosses around the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The purple tint is a reward for completing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon for the Keystone Master achievement in the current season. Again, this appearance will only be unlocked if you've completed the improving on history first and the unique Bordeaux color of Darken Blade is unlocked with the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which involves completing a list of Legion dungeon achievements. Demon's Touch is unlocked through PvP on a levels. 
Remember that your honor level is general across all characters, so you don't have to go through this grind on all classes. If you generally play PvP, this artifact is probably a piece of cake for you. The base purple tint of Demon's Touch is unlocked at honor level 10. At honor level 30, you unlock the green color. The blue tint is a reward for reaching honor level 50. And finally, the pale gold tint of Demon's Touch is unlocked at honor level 80. For those who did not complete the Mage Tower Challenge in Legion, the Flame Reaper appearance is unobtainable. The Mage Tower was a feat of strength and is no longer doable. If you did complete the challenge two and a half years ago, however, you'd have unlocked the gold appearance of Flame Reaper and can still today unlock the three other tints. Completing 10 different Legion dungeons will unlock the purple tint of Flame Reaper. These runs can be done alone or in a group and the dungeon difficulty doesn't matter. Winning 10 races at Battlegrounds will reward you with the red tint. And defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty will unlock the green tint of Flame Reaper if you have the base tint unlocked already. The hidden artifact appearance for Havoc Demon Hunters is Death Walker, and it's giving me grey hairs. To unlock it in its base green tint, you must acquire the item Guise of the Death Walker. The item is 100% drop from the mob Downfall, however, it's not that simple. For Downfall to spawn and to get to him in the air, you must first get Candrail's Charm, which drops from mobs in Suramar. The RNG for Candrail's Charm is awful, however, so I hope you're patient by nature. I still haven't unlocked the appearance, by the way. After obtaining the charm, take it to Candrail Twin Shadow, who's standing on a hill west of Felsoul Hold. She'll send you up into the air to Downfall. While you're there, you gotta stay up by gliding and making use of the winds Downfall creates around himself. This will be quite easy and fast to do if you're on a high level character and can just take Downfall down with one or two hits. After unlocking the hidden artifact in Space Tint, you can unlock the Turquoise Tint by completing 30 Legion Dungeons on any difficulty. This can again be done by yourself or in a group. Completing 200 World Quests anywhere on Azeroth after unlocking the Hidden Appearance will reward you with a purple tint. And lastly, the red tint will be unlocked once you kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction after unlocking the Death Walker appearance. The tank spec of the Demon Hunter class Vengeance is having quite the rise in popularity recently in Shadowlands, where they are the preferred tanking class for Mythic Dungeons. In Legion, the spec was giving the Aldrachi Warblades as their artifact weapon, and they have quite the history. This is what the artifact book has to say about the weapons. The countless nicks and gorges that mar the Aldrachi Warblades form a map of their violent history. These weapons have vanquished thousands of demons and absorbed their twisted souls. It is said that the Warblades even drew the molten blood of the Burning Legion's ruler, Sargeras. Truly, there is extraordinary power in these otherworldly blades. In your hands, there is no telling what havoc they will wreak on the Legion. You unlock the base golden tint of the Eldrachi Warblades when you begin your class hall campaign as a demon hunter and clear the questline to acquire them. The green tint is a reward for recovering one of the pillars creation from the Broken Isle zones. Recovering Light's Heart and bringing it to a Demon Hunter class hall through the A Falling Star questline unlocks the purple tint. And the grey tint of the Eldrachi Warblades will be unlocked once you complete the first major campaign in your class hall. Illidari Crest is unlocked in Scald and Turquoise tints when you complete your entire class hall campaign as a Demon Hunter. The green tint is automatically unlocked when you reach level 50 on your Demon Hunter character. And lastly, the dark pink tint of Illidari Crest is a reward for completing the archaeology achievement this side up. Dreadlord Spite is the artifact appearance unlocked with the Balance of Power questline. And now we're talking appearances. This weapon is worth the tedious questline. Balance of Power ends with the achievement Improving on History, which also unlocks the base green tint of Demon Spite. I've put a link to the questline in the description below. After completing and improving on history, you can unlock the turquoise tint of Demon's Bite 
by killing 8 world bosses in the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The purple tint is a reward for timing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon in the current season, again after completing Balance of Power. And the fiery red tint is unlocked once you get the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which requires a series of Legion dungeon achievements. Bone Terror is quite a unique Warglaive appearance and is unlocked through PvP on the levels for Vengeance Demon Hunters. The base sand colored tint is unlocked at honor level 10. The grey tint is unlocked with honor level 30. At honor level 50, you're rewarded with a green tint of Bone Terror. And lastly, at honor level 80, you unlock the brown tint of this artifact appearance. I can't decide if I think the Umberwing appearance is cool or goofy. Is it just me? Or is that a tiny skeletal Ilden head on the side of those walk leaves? Or is it just a dead demon hunter? I wanna know. Umberwing was unlocked through the Mage Tower challenge back in Legion. As mentioned, the Mage Tower is now no longer doable, and for those who did not complete it two and a half years ago, the appearance associated with it is unfortunately not obtainable. If you did complete the challenge back in Legion, you'd have unlocked the gold tint of Umberwing and can, to this day, still unlock the other three tints. Completing 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty rewards you with a grey tint of Umberwing. These dungeons can be done alone or in a group, you decide. The um, purple tint is unlocked by winning 10 rated battlegrounds, and by defeating Kil'jaeden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the final golden green tint of Umberwing. I'm sorry about the colors here, I honestly have a hard time pinpointing the exact color differences in the Umbowing tints, so please consider what color they are yourselves. Iron Warden is the hidden artifact appearance for Vengeance Demon Hunters, and this weapon appearance is quite distinct from the rest, which I appreciate. The base green tint of Iron Warden is unlocked by acquiring the item Bulwark of the Iron Warden. Now, Bulwark of the Iron Warden drops from demons located in the Twisting Nether. You unlock the portal to get to the Twisting Nether from your class hall through the Twisting Nether Order Hall advancement. This will allow you to once a day enter the portal, which is located next to Loramis Thalepides, or Thalepides, however you pronounce that, in the Fellhammer, and kill a powerful demon summoned there. The demon summoned can change every time, but all of them have a chance to drop Bulwark of the Iron Warden with a 1.2 to 8% chance, depending on the demon. After unlocking the base tint of the hidden artifact, you can unlock the turquoise tint by completing 30 Legion dungeons. This can also be done on any difficulty, by yourself or in a group. The purple tint of Iron Warden is a reward for completing 200 world quests anywhere in Azeroth after unlocking the hidden appearance. And finally, by killing a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction, you unlock the red tint of Iron Warden. Short video this time around, given that demon hunters only have two specs. It is quite fascinating to me that the class only has two, as the only class in the game. I sometimes wonder if it was intentional, or the developers simply ran out of ideas of what to do with the demon hunter. That said, I've never been inconvenienced by the lack of a third spec, and I think demon hunters are great as they are. For those of you who made it to the end of this video, I'm curious to hear which class you mained in Legion, and which artifact appearances you unlocked before BFA. Please leave a comment below with your story if you like. I personally played Horde at the time, maining a Frost DK, before all my friends switched to Alliance. Thank you so much for watching. Shamans, which I know very little about at this point, are up for next week, so hopefully that will teach us both something. Please leave a like if you like, if you don't, that's okay too. Have a wonderful day!